Hey, welcome back, everybody, to Wrestling Travel Presents The Lockdown Sessions, brought to you, as always, by our good friends at True Heel Heat Wrestling up there in New York City, and also brought to you by Wrestle Merch Central over in the UK, uh, which is, uh, we're going to talk a lot about Wrestle Merch Central, I think, coming up, but I would love to welcome you to the show, Georgia Smith. Georgia, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. And as we discussed kind of off camera, I'm up here in the freezing part of the country and it's uh, it's so warm you can't even go outside down there by you. It's, so that's... Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got to have total opposites. I'm actually just looking outside right now and it's very, very hot and we just had a, a big storm yesterday, so it's very humid. Um, yeah, it's I, I'm, I'm from Canada, Calgary originally, so I completely understand what you're going through when it's that minus... Uh, temperature and you're like tears cry or when your tears form on your face and it's like frozen yeah I, I totally understand what you're going through right now <laughs> yeah I was gonna say when was the last time you were uh that you spent significant time up in Canada that's what I was gonna ask you uh probably about five years ago I mean I visited last year at Christmas for two weeks but um I lived there for a few months five like in 2013 and then I moved okay. to England in the summer of 2013, and I was there for five years. Oh, Cal, so you've been all over the world. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I went to England from 2013 to 2018, and then I came back September 2018 to Tampa, and I've been here since. So, uh, yeah, I've got the three passports, you know, England from my dad. I was born in Canada, and then from just my dad's work and my mom being uh, American, I've got, uh, I'm fortunate to have three passports, so I can live and work in all three countries. And unfortunately, during the pandemic, none of them worked, right? No, it didn't, didn't make a damn difference, exactly. So <laughs> I was just, you know, I, I, at least I, I had a decent weather for the most part during the fun lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. Because that, that was, I was talking a bit with uh, Sebastian Swab, who runs Smash Wrestling up in Toronto. And he's going, hmm. yeah, we're, I'm in Wisconsin, he's in Toronto. But then when we have these lockdown measures, I see a lot of people that at least, hey, we're able to walk our dog, we're kind of get out and go to the park and we're sitting here at 20 below going yeah it must be i mean you can go outside if you want to but it's tough yeah yeah i uh, i know canada it's it's very strict right now with their lockdown stuff so i mean here it's pretty much back to normal um i mean obviously events and venues they're they're not like open to full capacity we did have the super bowl last week here and uh it, there, it didn't fill to full capacity obviously it was about i think 20 something thousand in the audience um but you know other than that everybody we're just wearing our masks keeping our distance i know i've got hand sanitizer but we're just trying to go about pretty much almost back to normal here but uh my mom she visited here for filming with wwe and then she went back last week and now she's in quarantine for two weeks up in canada and she as she you just said she said yesterday it was freezing absolutely freezing like unbearably cold so <laughs> i'm sure she's like jack nicholson in the shining right now because she lives in the, <laughs> in the mountains and <laughs> yeah it's just like her and her boyfriend and they're probably driving each other nuts so yeah that's my favorite pastime is driving everybody nuts. Now, I'm going to get into wrestling talk eventually. That's what everybody watching this is going, hey, this is why we yeah, tuned in. Yeah, to it. Bunch. That's about the weather and stuff. Well, yeah. I was going to ask, though, Super Bowl, did you notice living in that area? Did you notice, like, was it busier? Was there quite a bit? I know there's only 25,000 fans, but was it noticeably yeah. busier, yeah. I guess? Yeah. yeah, everywhere you went, it was, like, party central. Um, I went to Clearwater Beach uh, on Saturday, the day beforehand, and um, 50 Cent was there. Mike Tyson was there because um, they were all hanging out with Hulk Hogan. Um, I yeah, just happened to be walking by Hogan's uh, beach shop, and they're like, oh, my God, the 50 Cent's here. And I didn't see him, but, yeah, it was it was just, you know, like spring break, like Party Central. And the traffic, because I live about 15 minutes away from Raymond James Stadium, and, like, you could leave my house, and that exit takes you right there and it was just harry asked me to pick him up from the airport that sunday afternoon and i was like oh man so it was it was busy yeah so cool then they're roughly going to have hopefully the same amount of fans for the mm -hmm. upcoming wrestlemania which is good I think but, you uh, a good point i think wwe's taking some notes as to like okay what's what can we do so i think that was a good and it's in tampa coincidentally so yeah yeah, we were all excited, ready to come down there for Tampa last year. Wrestling and travel, of course, we bring 
fans from around the world to their favorite wrestling events. And, uh, you know, that all got canceled. So we we're excited about it, but we're kind of, we're, we're excited that it's happening and we're not going to go obviously being a United Kingdom company kind of crossing borders is, um, you know, not recommended or not probably even allowed right now, but we're excited yeah. to be able to watch from a distance and yeah. see some fans in there. Um, I, I, you're correct. Cause I remember last year, uh, wrestle travel map contacted me and they were going to interview me, um, for WrestleMania. And like you said, there was people coming from England with uh, Russell travel that was going to watch it. And they had like, I think like a, a box they were going to view it at and they were going to go to the NXT show. And then I was supposed to go to Liverpool for a, a, a wrestling convention and the they were, wrestling, yeah. yeah, for the love of wrestling. And they were going to sit and talk to me there as well. So, I mean, again, like you said, none of it's happened, but I mean, at least the show was still going on. And, yeah. you know, I felt honestly, like, and I know I, uh, it's safety had to the precautions had to happen but last year I felt like oh like right when my dad got in and it's in Tampa like I felt a little bit ripped off when <laughs> you know like I was just like oh. but it was just the circumstances but I just felt like really like just disappointed like oh man just and I personally because I was just like it was my dad's moment and everything and um but now it's like I just feel so much better that they're doing it again this is like take two <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, it's it's going to happen. Um, I'm glad it's not happening in Hollywood or, yeah, because it was supposed to be in Hollywood. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm just glad. I'm, I'm just happy I don't have to travel anywhere for it. <laughs> right. It is, it is happening um, coming up in Tampa over the, the two days. So um, is there anything you can share about that that hasn't been shared or not, not that hasn't been, that you're I not going to step on any toes at all? Do you know what day it's happening, the Hall of Fame or anything? Nothing. Yes. I know nothing. We'll figure it out, and we'll. Yeah, I know. They, I think they're still figuring it out. I think they yeah. don't even know. But um, I did contact somebody, and like we've been going back and forth. So I think they just want everything to be clear and confirmed before they're like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. But um, I mean, I should know soon because you know, times are coming. <laughs> yeah, it's fifty, fifty, just a shadow or fifty days away. Now, obviously, I, I doubt they're gonna have. Uh, fans at that be based on the pandemic and then based oh, on uh, fans will come okay yeah. I was going to say because the last time when I was in New York the, the fans came and I know they had an issue obviously with security with Brett there mm -hmm. um, so um, how I know that is because um, I saw WWE made a statement that like tickets will be on sale and uh, but it's going to be like Super Bowl it's limited yeah so I don't, I will see how it's going to happen. And it said it's at Raymond James Stadium. So, because I, I thought at first it was going to be at Thunderdome. That's what I thought. I thought like, oh, they'll just, but it's happening there. So. Oh, that's, that's very cool. Yeah. Then you can be able to spread everybody out and then you're in mm -hmm. a bigger venue. But we're going to back up a year ago. Can you tell me what that feeling was like when you finally learned that your dad was going to go uh, into the Hall of Fame? I know you've probably I, been asked this a million times, but uh, I was I couldn't believe it because Harry wanted me home to tell me some news and I didn't think anything of it. It was actually just like you said, it was like a year ago today. It was like right before Valentine's Day. And I was doing my taxes and I he was like, What champagne do you want? You know, uh, I, I need you to come home because I got some good news. And I come home and he gets my mom on speakerphone and he was like, Yeah, so I'm signing with AEW. And I was like, huh? And I was like, oh okay like that's cool and but that was his false finish because he said I'm just kidding Davey's going in the hall of fame and I said so you're not going to AEW he's like no I just said that so like we could all sit and you know I we could all I could tell you all the news together and you could come home and we we would share this together and I was like he's like haha false finish got you but I was like okay my brain is like processing right. like so he's going in the hall of fame he's like yeah yeah he's going and he's like but uh, I'm going on the bump tomorrow to announce it, and um, some things happened, and he didn't announce it, and then he did it on Corey Graves' podcast, which was pre-recorded um, right after the bump, and then uh, it was uh, released, the, the podcast, on March 12th, when they made the announcement, and then what happened March 12th? Everything got shut down. Yeah. So, I was like... Uh, but when I got the news, I was so excited, but I was told from everybody like you cannot say a word about it 
you know, it's in like the wrestling news and everything that like it's going around that it's been talked about. If anybody asks you, you don't know anything. So I had to keep that quiet for like a month. Like I only certain family members I told, um, I told maybe one person at my work and like that was it. Because I didn't want this to, I didn't want it to be ruined, sabotaged, it getting out at all because that's how much it meant to me. So I was like, it, whenever I was, people online were like, congratulations, congratulations. And this was like end of February. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. La, 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 la. Um, <laughs> so I, I just, I, I was so, so happy. But now I'm like, once it actually happens, then that's when it will like feel real to me. The actual induction. So. Yeah, sorry, I did my cough button there. I've learned that being a. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I wasn't ignoring you. I, I hit the mute. There. Um, it, it is. Uh, yeah, that's got to be something that you're you're excited to to tell, and then having to hold it in. And you're right. Everywhere I look on Twitter or the internet, somebody there's five million people that have predictions uh, mm -hmm. of everything. So that is something to you know. Of course, you always hear so and so is coming back, but that had to be one. Uh, to try to, you're excited, but now you gotta, you gotta hold it in. That, that had to be tough. Um, yeah. I want to talk like, you know, Harry. Harry got into into the the business and doing very well. You see him all over Japan. See him everywhere and stuff. Mm -hmm. Had had it ever crossed your mind at all to ever do anything, uh, to do any wrestling training, anything like that? No. Not even for an instant. No. Nope. Okay. Nope. It just uh, wasn't for me. Like, I just, just never, never, I don't know, didn't ever. Harry, like, that's what he wanted to do. That's what his dream was. That's what, that was for him. And Harry was meant for that. Um, and my dad, you know, uh, I mean, I never wanted to do it, but he just also kind of made clear to me, like, that's, you know, I, I don't want you doing it. So I was like, okay. So that was, that was that. <laughs> But with with your family lineage, I'm sure you've been have have people approached you about doing nope. stuff at all? Great. Not one time. Nope. <laughs> There's never been any interest. No. All right. On either side. Okay. Fantastic. Um, I want to talk to you. The the main reason we got together is I wanted to talk about one of our sponsors and one of the people that support us and we support them, Russell Merch Central. Mm -hmm. um, love those guys. And they've got some fantastic British Bulldog gear. And you're modeling one right now, your sweatshirt. But, yes, uh, that's right. I got this one. This one's a new design. I love this hoodie. And then if you can see on the back of it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's it's really cool. They've got it in tank top shirts. Because um, this design came out with, um, I worked with Florida uh, Bull English Bulldog Rescue Foundation here in Tampa. And they, the, somebody made this design, actually in England, they made it. And uh, we, me and the guy came together and we made these shirts and they sold out. And people kept saying, I want more, I want more, I want more. And we only made a, uh, not many. Was So I sent this to Wrestle Merch and I was like, let's come together and make it work. So we, we made them and I love them. Now we've got hoodies, uh, all different kinds of shirts. And we're coming up with new designs all the time. As you saw as well, there's the Heart Foundation, Bulldog Foundation vest that you can get. <clears throat> um, I actually want to take my dad's one it's in my room. I want to take it and get them to touch it up a bit because, uh, you know, over time it's, it's faded quite a lot. And it, they just, they make it look so good. Um, I'm really, really quite proud of it. Um, when I saw, like, I think, did you see today, like, the or a couple days ago, like, the woman spraying it, like, painting it? Yeah, she's hand-painting it. Yeah, that's hand what I was going to ask. Wow, wow, it's crazy. Yeah, she she hand-paints it. So, like, each one of them is hand-painted, handmade. Um, it's just pristine, and I just think my dad would be so proud of it. And, like, that just, it just touches my heart because, like, so many people wanted it, and it's happening. Like, all these things that, it, it's it's happening. It's happening and I never I didn't think it would happen I always thought that would be cool you know we made t-shirts with that bulldog design but now look Russell merch has taken it to the next level and they've made those for people that want them and how cool will those be at wrestling conventions or events well, that and the fact that when you watch that little clip that they have about the woman is hand painting like when you're buying that bulldog merchandise you're not buying some cheap 
No. Like I mean, this is quality, quality, quality. item, you know? Yeah. Uh that that's what's awesome about it. In fact, I was going to wear I have a British Bulldog classic t shirt, but it's blue and I've got the green screen, so it wouldn't have it wouldn't have showed up anyway. I was gonna Darn. I was gonna show off and show you that hey, I have old school merch. That's um, awesome. but now you just gotta take my word for it because I, I try to it, it. <laughs> doesn't it doesn't show up on the, on the green screen. Um, what other is there? Uh, you know, I'm a I'm a cap and and skull cap and stuff like like that, especially in the cold weather. Um, is there those kind of merch available mm -hmm. and in down the line? I mean, I just think it's endless what you can do. Yeah, so we've got hats, um, all different designs, looks, colors, and we have uh, toques or, or beanies um, that are really cool. Unfortunately, I don't I ha don't really get to wear them here in Florida, but they are amazing. Like, yeah, like you said, like it's uh, unlimited. We're actually thinking of coming up with some like uh, bulldog fanny packs because you know my dad oh, yeah. used to fanny packs. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's. I just love being creative and uh, Dean who uh, helps run Russell merch. Like we just work together and like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And you know, it's, um, it's, uh, it's uh, near and dear to my heart. Yeah. hundred percent. And just, just talking with Dean in the short amount of time that I have, we have a little bit of a merch store there, but what a guy. And there's so much that you can do. If you're like, mm -hmm. I mean, your dad, you're wearing the union Jack tights and everything i'm sure there's all kinds of uh uh awesome merch you can do with that um do you have a lot of uh like of your dad between you and harry i'm sure you guys have a lot of his old uh like i would say like memorabilia like like tights that he wore boots and stuff like that um i have some i have like a like a clothing rack with with his stuff on it um because when wwe came and filmed here for my dad's upcoming documentary, I wanted it to be like displayed nicely. And, uh, you know, eventually what I want to do is I want to like make a bulldog room and have it on mannequins and uh, do that. But um, yeah, I have, um, I have a decent amount. Uh, not every single thing of his. I unfortunately, I don't have his like uh, Wembley cape. I don't have that, but I do have his WrestleMania seven cape that he wrestled with Warlord. And it's like the blinged out the British bulldog on the cape. It's quite heavy. Um, so I've got, I've got all those, um, all this stuff from WCW. Um, I've been finding little things along the way as well, you know, from, from, uh, different family members and my mom. So, I mean, it's, 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 uh, pretty cool, actually. It brings back a lot of memories and I, I can't wait for, to be able to travel again and for people to see it because before the pandemic and everything and before WrestleMania, early March, I went to New York. Uh, for a couple of conventions and I had it displayed and uh, it was just really cool for fans to see it you know they got to wear the vest and take pictures with it and I love to do that again um, well I was going to do that in Liverpool so yeah yeah well that that might still happen you know depending yeah. on I know for the love of wrestling will go on and I know I've been at different uh, conventions where where I've been at or wrestling travel has been at and I know they've had uh places booths where people actually had some of the actual ring worn belts uh, mm -hmm. from back in the day and memorabilia and it's cool um if, if anybody having to do anything with this business even if you're just a fan it's very cool just to kind of look at some of that stuff yet alone be able to kind of touch it mm -hmm. um feel mm -hmm. it now um a couple kind of final questions because i want to be very respectful of your time um do you would you go back and watch some of uh the matches do you have any that that stick out that are fun and favorites or is it just kind of like that was my dad's work and I don't really watch a whole lot of it or or do you get um, into it? that's a very good question um a lot of the stuff you know I, I I didn't watch for a long time just because um it made me a bit uh I don't know if melancholy is the word but it just kind of made me like well, I'm not going to get this again, or it just kind of brought, just made me sad. But uh, now, you know, we're over the past few years, I've, I've been watching more of the stuff. And as you can see on his social media, I post clips and things of his all the time. And I've had to go back and watch things and look up dates and history. So I've got like a whole new respect and um, relationship with my dad, because I've had to look at it as a, as a fan and as somebody running his business and as his daughter. So, uh, but, you know, his matches that stand out in my mind, they're obviously uh, SummerSlam 92. 
uh, with Brett. That was uh, probably my f- most favorite match of his, um, just because it was in England, his his home, and it sold out. Just the whole story, the match, just everything. You know, the the build up. That was my favorite match. And then you know, over time, I liked you know when he had his hair short and he wrestled with Owen when he was a tag team with Owen. I liked that when he was a heel. Um, he had a lot of good matches uh, during that time. Obviously, the Calgary Stampede, that match was good. He had a lot of good matches. Well, not a lot, but he had decent good matches with William Regal within WCW back in 93. There was a Halloween Havoc uh, match that I just saw my dad. Like, he was just on point with everything. And for his size and how quick and everything he moved, he it was just, just really good. And I liked his storyline with The Rock because I just thought it was, like, just funny and random and... Um, uh, it was just kind of happened, and I just I thought it was just uh, a good good time in my life and his life. One of my favorite matches that I have to that nobody really points out, and you can find it on YouTube. Uh, but I believe it was 1988, the British Bulldogs. Um, it was under the AWA, but they wrestled the Rock and Roll Express in like Kansas oh, City, yeah. Missouri. Yeah, and it was so cool to me because. A lot of people don't know about it. It's almost like taking that time machine back to a, a dream match that a lot of people aren't even aware that happened. So that's that's just one of my one of my favorites. And I don't know if you've gotten a chance to watch that, but it's pretty cool. Uh, I have actually, and Harry actually brought that match up to my dad, and uh, you know, obviously a long time ago. And my dad, yeah, he remembered it. And uh, I actually saw the Rock and Roll Express when I was in New York, and they brought it up to me, but. Um, yeah, I also liked um, the British Bulldogs versus um, the Dream Team. Coincidentally, it was Valentine's Day yesterday. That match is, you know, I, I watched that recently. I never really properly watched it until about a month ago. Um, coincidentally, Bruce, uh, Brutus and um, Greg, they're, they're doing a show with WWE looking, trying to track down their old ring gear. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and, you know, obviously one of their big wrestling moments was, you know, tag teaming and going against the British Bulldogs, so they wanted to talk to us about it. We actually had a dinner with them that they filmed, you know, us reuniting. Um, we were talking all about that match. So, yeah, yeah, that match I thought was really good with Ozzy. Yeah, that was one of the WrestleMania two, I believe, in Chicago. That's how yeah. – I can't remember my Social Security number, but I can remember yep. – <laughs> things like that yeah awesome that that's right on the edge of me really starting to watch like wwe as a as a as a young guy so uh that's fantastic um any other now you mentioned one thing i want to my final question is always um trying to get over what everybody's doing we, we talked about wrestle merch central so yep. I, I encourage fans to to get on wrestle merch central and at least look at the gear and all this amazing stuff check out their twitter to look at the the bulldog, how that that woman is hand painting those vests. But you talked about, um, and I, I want you to talk about that too. But you talked about doing bulldog rescue, um, and I want to yeah. talk about stuff near and dear to your heart as we close this interview uh, of where people can find out more and and how they can help out. Yeah. So um, back in the summertime, uh, I worked together with. Um, we're not doing it anymore because we had sold out all the shirts, but uh, Florida English Bulldog Rescue, if you guys, you know, are in the Florida area at all or you want to, you know, a bulldog to, to adopt, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about doing that. Um, you know, you fill out your form or if you want to donate to them, you go to uh, Flor- English, EnglishFloridaBulldogRescue.com. And also when you just search it on Google, it will come up. Or if you follow them on social media, you'll find them on there. Um, I want to also work with other foundations and other things that were also near to my dad's heart like um you know the 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 cancer foundation um because you know my dad lost his sister and his mom to cancer um so I would like to work with them in some capacity but you know my dad's stuff it's just growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger so I'd like to be able to to help give back in any way that I can and uh, do something that would make him happy as well um yeah, I think that's I think that's th- those are the main two. Right, and then then as we get closer to the Hall of Fame induction, I know uh, the buzz amongst the wrestling fans and the wrestling world is going to get greater. So, um, what are your social medias that the fans can follow you on? 
Yes. So my social media is, um, so I've got Twitter. It's uh, at Georgia Smith 87. I'm on Instagram at Georgia J Smith. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Georgia Smith seven. Uh, my dad has Instagram, which is at the British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith. He also has Twitter, which is at underscore Davy Boy Smith. And he has a YouTube channel, which you guys can check out old gems, old cool things. It's growing more and more and new things uploaded all the time. I have a really good team that helped me. So we, we, we work together. This is why this whole team Davy movement's going the way it is, where the the path it's going. Because I got good good people. Um, so yeah, he's got his YouTube. And we also have a website for my dad. It's uh, uh, www.davyboysmith.com. So on there, you can ask frequently asked questions. So if somebody watches this interview and they're like, oh, I, I would like to ask Georgia this, feel free to ask. Or if you've got any questions for Harry or anything about Davy, please make sure it's appropriate, not rude and anything, because we will not answer you. But I, I try to keep up to date with that as much as I can and up, update it. Um, and it's got my dad's diet. It's got my dad's workout any news, anything happening with Davey or, you know, anything with, with the brand, um, you know, any news. And uh, that's about it. That's about it, really. I try to just keep things uh, going on there. Um, so check it out. And it's so cool that all that stuff is is run by you, the family, and your team, and it's not just a random fan that's no. got that's the cool thing okay because that's when i when i try to do my research i tr have to try to dig through what i think is accurate and, yeah yeah and I, I run everything i and i have you know i just got good people and that's you know people ask me like why how do you think like this is successful and it's like well it's just you got to have a good positive group and that's that's why it's it's going the way it is and i'm so happy, so happy for everything that's happening for him. And there's a lot more things to come with my dad um, over time. So, I mean, I there's a few things that I, I can't announce. I can't yeah. fill the beans on. So you guys will just have to stay tuned and keep updated on the website and on his social media, the news and everything coming out with him. And uh, just to touch back on WrestleMerch Central, as I said to somebody when I did a podcast last week, WrestleMerch Central to me is like pro wrestling tees on another level. So, yeah, no, they're, they're great. I had an idea a long time ago working with wrestling travel. I'm like, we should do something that's like pro wrestling tees over in the UK. And then I see rest like all of my ideas. I feel like Ringo when he was in the Beatles suggesting a song and they're like, yeah, uh, James Brown's already done that, you know? And I'm like, okay. And that's how I, I got hooked on with uh wrestle merch central and, and they're not just, doing great things but great people too that's great what people. i love about it now we're going to go back to the future if you're watching this right now you have already seen well unless this is going to totally backfire in my face and if scheduling messes this up but georgia mm -hmm. you would have just seen her on our live podcast and then we debuted this afterwards so hopefully um you've gotten a chance to ask some questions but now you know how to yeah. follow everything so georgia smith Congratulations to you and your Thanks. family on the, the Hall of Fame induction. A year late from us, but hey, congratulations. Hey. And we'll take it. And really awesome to talk with you. And uh, we continue to support uh, you and your family. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I mean, obviously, we're doing a whole Back to the Future thing, but I was going to say, I'll see you on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. I already saw you on Thursday. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Thank you. Thank you.